Good morning, welcome to the small loft. I'm John. In November last year, I bought this UJK PATH guide system from Axminster Tools. Since then I've made two MFT benches, one on wheels and the fold down version. And now was a good time to review the jig after some use. So the MFT tables work on a series of square and parallel 20mm holes set at 96mm centres, which is based on an old German engineering standard. And for the table tops to work, everything needs to be exactly square and parallel which is where the jig comes in. There are alternatives to making your own tops. You can actually buy the tops pre-made and there's a lot of sellers selling them on eBay, Etsy and just looking at eBay today, sellers seem to be selling them for about £50 each which if you want one top it's probably the way to go. However, if you want multiple tops like I did, the jig has some advantages. The jig I bought is the Mark 1 version which currently retails at £149. I actually paid £139 because I'd had a £10 off value and both my bench tops are made from 600 by 1200 by 18 mil MDF. The one that I made last week, I paid about 13 pounds for that piece of MDF. So that leaves you about 35 to 40 pounds to contribute towards a jig. So I think if you're going to make, say, four table tops, it might work out cost effective. Also, the table tops I have are a slight strange size, but from my point of view, the jig was the right way to go. There is two versions of this jig. There's the Mark One and the Mark Two. I bought the Mark one version so let's see what's in the packet and then I'll tell you how that compares to Mark II and what you get for that extra 50 pounds of spend. In the packet you get two one meter rules with three millimeter holes at 96 millimeter centers. You get the jig with three dog holes, three pin holes and two holes which receive the drill bit. The drill bit sits in like that. You get two dogs, which is actually part of that jig and sit in there. And you get three pins, which work as the setting out for the rule and also for the jig. A drill guide with a three millimeter hole. A three mil drill bit, a depth stop for the large drill bit and an X key to just to tighten that up. Lastly, you get a set of instructions. Now the instructions are quite comprehensive and, this, and it's very step by step. So. so basically just to show you how it works, the first thing I did is centralise my dog holes on my bench top. It doesn't really matter if you want to have them offset then that's fine but I like to set them out. So you just have a little bit of, with these two rules and the tape measure, just made sure that there was going to be equidistant front backs and side to side. Once you've got that in place, does recommend you put a couple of clamps on just to hold them still. Three millimeter drill bit, guide to keep your drill square, place that on there and then just make your three mil holes. And then you end up with a series of three millimeter holes down the length of your ruler. As you can see here, I've not drilled yet the final 20 millimeter holes. And then once you've done that, you need to then set the next set of holes square. I'll use this set of holes here as a demonstration. You pin in there using your three, four, five, which is standard construction geometry for setting out a square. Measure one, two, three. You pin in your rule in there. And then up four, one, two, three, four, where them two holes intersect, drop another pin in, and then that is square. Then you can continue to drill that hole, that hole, that hole. And then once you've done that, do exactly the same on the other side of the bench, and then using the rules and that, you can actually join up the, the matrix, and eventually you have all these three millimeter holes at 96 millimeter centers. Once you've got them series of holes all around the benches, then you've actually finished with the rules, and it's time to turn your attention to the jig. Now, the jig here, as I said, the drill bit goes there. The little spur of the drill bit, locates in the three millimeter holes that you've drilled. The pins locate in the three other three millimeter holes. So that's now perfectly square and you can drill the hole. Because I've not drilled all my holes here, I'll just actually demonstrate that, which is easy. 
like that and it just takes time to go across the bench top just say the instructions you can create a bench top in about 20 minutes i've actually found it more like 40 minutes on the 1200 600 size top doesn't qualify in the instructions what size bench top to, takes 20 minutes but i think allow 40 minutes my first one probably took an hour because i was working my way through the instructions the other one i made the other day is 40 minutes once you go around the the bench top with the jig and the drill bit in that location eventually you will run out of three millimeter holes in which to insert the pins so you actually get to a point where you can't find all hole to use as a reference while you're drilling the big hole once that happens you switch your drill bit from hole one to hole two you either use the pins in conjunction with these dogs or as you get to the end of the bench drilling operation you actually just use these all the time so we just drill that hole there with the pin in there but when i come to drill say this hole i can get a pin position there but i can't get a pin position there because there's a 20 millimeter hole there so swap the drill bit into drill hole two and then i can drop that dog in to that 20 millimeter hole there and the other dog into that 20 millimeter hole there And then I can drill that hole. So that's basically how the system works. When you're drilling the top, it's better to have a spacer underneath rather than another board. When I made this top, I had the old top off the bench underneath. So the drill bit was going through this board and slightly into the board underneath. Then it was taking the top off the board underneath. So every time I brought the drill bit back through, I ended up with a little MDF washer stuck in there, which meant I had to pull that off and then drill the next hole. Just slowed the process down and probably why I was quicker on the second one than the first one. If you have a little void underneath so you can plunge straight through. I was trying to avoid that because I didn't want to break out the underside of the hole. Inevitably that does happen. The other thing I should mention is this drill bit is tapered the 20 millimeters is exactly the sharp points on the end if you drilled an hole and broke one of these points off you would no longer be able to drill an hole that was large enough to accept the dog you can buy these replacement drill bits but they're about 45 pounds you need to be quite careful with these little tips just one thing i don't like about this jig and that is this depth stop i stopped using it because that goes on there tighten that up everything's ending on the floor this morning that goes on there and then you tighten that down to the depth so theory the drill bit just punches through the top the issue i have with this and it's the same issue i have with anything that has a little grub screw and even things like counter bit is that it doesn't take long for the grub screw or the allen key to start to burr out and then you can't get the thing out and i found if you tighten it what you think is probably tight enough without stripping it out it's not tight enough and this thing then ends up sliding up useless anyway i tightened it up as tight as i needed to so it didn't move and then i spent five minutes trying to get it off and in fact i ended up having to find a brand new allen key that's part of my bike tool sets because it's just rounded out the and i don't probably know if you can see that but it just rounded off the the end of the allen key so i'm not using that in future because i'm just going to get to a point where I'm actually panicking a little bit because I had the drill bit in there and I had that on there and I was stuck and I just couldn't get it off. Therefore the old jig would have been useless so that's my only beef. And Now the only other thing that I did once I got to this stage is just to get the router with a chamfer bit in and just run round the hole. <laughs> just gives you dogs nice entrance point if you've got the extra 50 pounds to spend on the mark ii version what do you get over this version the mark first of all the rulers in the mark one are just plain steel rulers with the three mil holes in in the mark ii version they're actually proper rules with millimeter markings on you are actually buying two one meter rules the three mil drill and drill bit is fundamentally different in the Mark II version. This is actually in sort of an older with a, a sleeve on and then this, this has a little protrusion on to sit in the rule. Probably gonna get a square cut. I've not had an issue with that. 
if you need a square to cut. And lastly, what you get with the Mark II is a dust extraction port that sits over the jig, and it just means that you don't have all the, the shape. Would I use it if I had it? Maybe not. If it does take you 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes to make a top, uh, that means you're gonna have the vacuum cleaner running for maybe 20 minutes. Quite nice to just chill out in the shop without the vacuum cleaner running. You can buy the vacuum port separately. I think they're about 30 pounds. So if you want the one meter rules and the vacuum port, then yes, it's definitely worth buying the two because if you buy all the components separately, then, then it's gonna be more than 200 pounds. But it is a lot of money, 200 pounds. To be fair, 139 pounds I spent on this was is a lot of money. At the moment, I made two bench tops. By the time I've made the, the rest, I think I should have saved over going out and buying them on the market. Other than, the caveat is other than, I don't damage the, the 20 millimeter drill bit in doing so, because if you have to spend another 40 pound on these drill bits, then it would be expensive. So there you go. I hope you just found that little video useful. I think my conclusion is, it's a worthwhile little tool to have. It's fun to play with. See whether you can justify buying the jig or whether it's cheaper to buy the tops. Like anything, the choice is yours. But thanks for watching. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my content, then please hit the subscribe button. It does help me out a lot by doing so. And until next week, bye.